In the 1920s, as the big bands were dominating music and the guitar was in the rhythm section and couldn't be heard, guitar players had to just play harder and harder. And there are stories of people actually getting bloody fingers from having to play so hard on these steel strings. They were trying to figure out how to make it louder, and so they added pickups to them. One of the first that was really successful of these electric guitars was the Gibson ES-150. Musicians were pleased they could kind of make a new sound. Makers and players were going back and forth sharing ideas, and in their discussions, they started to realize that maybe there was a, a different way. The first company that was commercially successful was, was uh, Rickenbacker. They came up with something that is nicknamed the frying pan, and it was a very small, round guitar with a very big pickup on it. It didn't sell a lot of guitars, but it sold enough to get people's attention. Someone can come up with the greatest idea, but if that culture or that marketplace is not ready for that particular invention, that it may not go somewhere. And inventors always risk when they come up with new ideas. If you're not able to get it to the marketplace and have other people use it and then innovate upon it, then you haven't had the impact that you're hoping to have. It really took off in the 50s when people like Leo Fender and others started to make solid body guitars that were successful in the marketplace. They had a completely new sound because no longer did you have to be reliant on symmetrical shape of the guitar. You didn't have the feedback issues that you would have with a hollow body guitar. And you could really make this very unique sound. Fender designed his guitars for country music. He was a fan of country music. He wasn't a guitar player himself. He liked the twang sound, and he made his guitars into instruments that could produce a twangy sound. The Fender Stratocaster is iconic. People who've never played the guitar recognize this particular design. It was such a revolutionary instrument to the electric guitar world. Les Paul is a great popularizer of the electric guitar. Fender wanted to go into business with him. Les Paul decided to go with Gibson, which was a reputable guitar maker. He had a unique background for this because he was a tinkerer and he did take things apart to see how they work. And he was also a musician. He had an uphill battle because he had gone to them with his early prototype guitar and they had dismissed him, said it, it wouldn't work. He had to convince Gibson to go into the solid body electric guitar business. Inventions always come from something before that people tweak, add to, may change. Sometimes they'll use in a different way that wasn't initially intended but it's, it's always a continuum of uh, innovations from lots of people. Gibson in 1952 came out with this guitar that they called the Gibson Les Paul. It was also a rivalry between companies in this new market, and as rock and roll took off in the 1950s, this new sound of this solid body electric guitar really made rock and roll what it is and made it really different. When Jimi Hendrix became well known in 1967. The Stratocaster was the best selling Fender guitar. Hendrix was really pushing the instrument beyond limits, or at least the limits that people had sort of assigned to it in their heads. He was adding distorted sounds, he was doing crazy stuff, flamboyant stuff. He took this clean sounding 1950s instrument and started to make sounds out of it that people just couldn't believe. In bringing back these distortions, it just gave it this really unique sound that then became associated with more of the rock and roll from the 60s onward. I think that there's a great invention story here with the electric guitar. It's nexus between inventors and players, and you have creative people on both sides, makers and players, reacting to one another. And you have guitar makers responding to the needs of guitar players. Guitar players using electric guitars in ways that were unintended by the guitar maker. And then the circle keeps going around with new innovations. And that innovations just keep going. It'll be interesting to see what comes out tomorrow.